um, we need not have tormenting phobias, fears in our lives. And so, with that being said, I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 5. And people who are paralyzed are not able to function normally. They just can't. They can't. If they're paralyzed, whatever, whatever part of them is paralyzed, if it's their legs that are paralyzed, they can't walk. If their arms are paralyzed, they can't move. They can't, they can't do anything. And so in Luke chapter 5, oh, let's see. Let's pick it up in verse 17, and I'll give you a little bit of what, well, I'll just read Luke 5, 17, now it happened on a certain day as he, Jesus, was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. Stop right there. So this is a regional leadership conference. These were the leaders of their day. These were the pastors of their day. These were their teachers of their day. And they had come to sit in Jesus' presence. And he was teaching. So they came to learn. But there's an interesting statement that's made here in, in the verse. And it says in the end of verse 17, And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Who is them? The leaders. So leaders need healing. How about that? Leaders need healing. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find out how they might bring him in because of the crowd... Couldn't get in the house. They went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, the men that carried this paralyzed man, he said to him, the man that was paralyzed, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees, the leaders, began to reason, saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven you or to say rise up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And in verse 26, it says, they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. You know what heaven's response to paralytics is? It's not to throw them away, I can tell you that. It's to heal them. He comes to seek, to save, to heal. He comes that we might have life and life abundantly, Jesus said. That, that word life, to have life and life abundantly, that word abundantly is perisos, and literally it means a superior quality and a super abundance of quantity. So he didn't come being stingy. He came to give. And in this leadership meeting, he came to heal, and he came to heal the leaders. And so what God is able to do with every single one of us is he's able to give us day-to-day strategic encounters and experiences to show us what needs to be done in our own life. 
Hello? And these guys, these leaders, did not understand and did not know and could not perceive that they were spiritually paralyzed. They could not function normally in the kingdom of God. They couldn't function in day-to-day -day walking with the Lord. They couldn't function. They didn't, they didn't have a clue. They didn't have a clue that they didn't have a clue. They couldn't see their own shortcomings. They couldn't see. They couldn't see. And so God in His great grace and God in His great mercy provided the, the audio-visual of what these leaders needed in their lives. They needed healing, and they didn't know that they needed healing. They thought that they, in fact, Jesus said in another place and another time, he says, they that are whole don't need a physician. If you think you're okay, you're not going to be looking for answers. If I think that I'm just fine and dandy, thank you very much, I'm just going to go on living my life thinking that there's nothing wrong. I don't know how many times in well, this year, 50 years of ministry for me. I don't know how many times in 50 years of ministry that the Holy Spirit has put his, his her, for you guys, finger on an area of my heart and an area of my life and said to me, after many years of walking with God, I don't like that. Has he ever said anything like that to you? Maybe it was your actions. Maybe it was your reactions. Maybe it was just a stinking attitude that you woke up and you adopted the moment that you opened your eyes. I don't know. You know. But I can tell you there's been many times in my life and many times in ministry that God, the Holy Spirit, has placed his finger on my that very, very specific area, and he pointed it out very clearly, I don't like that, that. <laughs> Meaning, something's going to change, and it's not going to be him. It's going to be me. Yes? The power of the Lord was present to heal them. And then here comes the ceiling being torn off and a man being lowered right down in front of them that was a paralytic. And Jesus goes right after it and starts operating in something that is so foreign to them. He starts operating in grace. And they don't even have a grid for grace. All they have a grid for is legalism. All they have a grid for is the law, the Torah. You keep it or else. And there's no mercy in it. That's what they grew up on. That's what they were fed. That's what they were raised. That's what they lived. That's what they thought. That's what they believed. And they needed healing and they didn't know it. And there's a lot of areas of our hearts and there's a lot of areas of our lives where we need healing and we don't know it. As leaders, as Christians, as believers, there's a lot. And so what does Jesus do? He starts right off the bat, right in the very, very beginning. Man, your sins are forgiven you. And now what was on the inside of those leaders comes to the surface in their thinking and Jesus reads them like a book. And he says to them, what are you reasoning for? Why are you trying to figure this out in your head? What are you, what are you, what are you doing comparing this to the grid that's in your own heart and your own life and your own thinking? Why are you trying to, why are you trying to figure this out? Which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, get up and walk? Hmm? What a question, huh? What a question. And then he says to them, 
just so that you know I have the power to forgive sin. Get up and walk, young man. Up he gets, healed right in front of them. And he's praising God and he's glorifying God and I dare say that it wasn't quiet. If you've ever seen anybody that was paralyzed and have gotten up and, and, and were 100% healed, I have on numerous occasions. And I'm telling you, it's not quiet and it's not subtle. It's no, oh, thank you, Jesus. No, it's not that at all. I mean, they go ballistic. Peter and John went to pray one day at the temple and, and a man gets healed there. And what does he do? Jumping and leaping and praising God. We make up songs about that, right? Disturbed everything. Disturbed the status quo. Disturbed all of the, all of the religious thinking that was in their heads and in their hearts and in their minds. And guess what? We've still got religious thinking in our heads and our hearts and our minds that needs divinely disturbing. And God is in the process of doing that very thing right now all over the globe, not just at Asbury University. This is, this is happening all over the globe. It's a move of God that we're already in. People have asked me, well, do you think? I tell them, what difference does it make what I think? It matters what God thinks. Forget the reasoning. Jump in with both feet. Let him move on your heart. Let him move on your life. Let there, be, let there be a work of healing done inside of our hearts and inside of our lives, in our relationships, in our families, in our congregation. Come and let there be a work of healing done in our lives, in every single relationship that we've got in our lives. Come, Lord, we need you to come and heal us. And the beautiful thing is, is he's, his power is is present tense, is there to heal. And I'm here to tell you this evening that his power is here, present to heal. Now, here in the now. He is who he says he is. He can do what he says he can do. And he's more than willing to do it. And so these guys are sitting in a leadership conference and they're getting the illustration of illustrations and, and, and it, what does it do? It pulls out of them what they need to be healed of. Everything comes to the surface now. They're even now, now they're accusing Jesus as blaspheming. That's a strong word, by the way. So the son came to heal and he came to deliver from every single paralysis. Now this man's friends brought him there because they loved him. They wanted their friend healed. They had heard the words, the testimonies. They had heard the ramas from heaven that said that Jesus and Jesus' services, people get healed. He heals the blind. He heals the lame. He heals, and it went on and on and on. The, the, the reputation of the Lord Jesus Christ and his ministry, his public ministry, it went through the whole nation in a very short period of time. Word gets around. I'm telling you, word gets around, and it doesn't take it long, and you don't even need social media for this. It gets passed along very, very, very quickly. With social media and all the internet, it's exponential increase of how far and how fast it goes. It's remarkable, really. And so here, here he is, and, and, and so they love their friend, and, and you know what the normal manifestation of love is? Faith. Are you all here tonight? Or are you just sitting here? The normal manifestation of love is faith. We're told Paul writes in the book of Galatians, faith works by love. And so the manifestation of love is faith. And the operating system of faith is love. And these guys, ever how many it was, that got a hold of him, put him on a stretcher, and carried him to a service, ever how far they had to carry him, doesn't matter. 
They carried him to the service with one goal at their heart and one goal in their, in their heart and their mind. They loved their friend and they wanted to see him set free and they wanted him to have a miracle. And they get to the place, they can't even get into the building. What do they do? They go to the roof. They tear the roof off enough to get a, a hole big enough to put him down. That, that, that was quite an ordeal. That's not easy. It's not easy in this day and time with, our, with the tools that we have. These guys did it by hand. Tore the tile roofing off, it says. And they lower him down as Jesus is teaching. I get the feeling, I get the impression in my heart that Jesus just was, he just kept on teaching and the guy's being lowered right down in front of everybody and everybody's looking at the guy and Jesus is just teaching. He knows what's about to happen. So he looks up at the ceiling after the guy's on the floor and he sees something there. He sees their faith. which operates by love. And this is the environment of the, of, the, of the extension of the kingdom of God. This is it. Love. The Pharisees and the scribes and the teachers of that day and time knew nothing about this. They didn't have it in their own hearts. They had condemnation. They had rules. They had regulations. You better do this. You better not do that. It's Basically, no, 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 and especially no. Hmm? That's the way Pharisees operate. That's the way the scribes operated. To the letter of the law, no mercy, zero mercy. No room for love. That wasn't on their grid. That wasn't even on their radar. No room for love. And here's Jesus teaching them, and oh, is he teaching them. Because he sees faith that operates by love, and where there's faith that operates by love, mercy and grace are present to operate and function right in the middle of it. And so what does he do? You're forgiven. Causes quite a what would be a good word? A kerfuffle. <laughs> Caused a problem. Problem in their theology. They got their theological panties in a knot. This, this really upset them. Well, this can't be. You can't do this. Oh, he did. And he did it right in front of them on purpose. Perfect love casts out fear. Where there is love, faith will work. And where faith works, love prevails. Let me say that again. It went right over some of your heads. It didn't register. Where there is love, faith will work. And where faith works, love prevails. And that's what happened here. Love prevailed. And faith operated. And mercy and grace met the faith and there came the manifestation of the glory of God right there in that meeting. And we're in an hour and we're in a time when the glory of God is right now happening in the midst of our services. God's presence comes. Over the past few weeks, there's been a noticeable change in the atmosphere in the services. Yes? Noticeable. That's the glory of God. He's come down in the midst of His people in, in a sense of manifesting His glory and manifesting His power, manifesting His wonderful faith, manifesting His wonderful love, and it's just absolutely beautiful and absolutely wonderful. And so healing comes out of these expressions of faith and love and grace and mercy and healing is right in the middle of all that. That I can tell you. And so here they are. And then Jesus demonstrates 
how grace operates, how love operates, how mercy operates, how healing operates. It flows out of the Spirit of God through faith and hope and love. It flows this way. This is His way. This is the way of the kingdom of God. Not law, not condemnation, none of that. That doesn't work. That won't get anybody healed. That won't transform anybody's life. Faith comes by hearing, but transformation comes by seeing. There's a big difference. And both are necessary. And Jesus demonstrated the kingdom. He demonstrated the Father's heart. He demonstrated the love of God. He demonstrated the mercy of God. He demonstrated the grace of God right there in front of them because that's what they needed to have healing inside of their hearts and their lives. And so the law was cast down and cast away in that moment because the love of God prevailed. There was faith and we operate in the kingdom by faith and by love, by grace and by mercy. And all of the gifts of the Spirit of God and all of the manifestations of the kingdom of God come out of these things. This is really, really, really important. They loved their friend. And fear was cast away. And perfect love was demonstrated in and through faith. And there came a change in a place that day. The man was forgiven. The man was healed. The man was filled with the glory of God. And the man's life was changed for the rest of his life. And probably everybody that knew that guy. Whoever they were, they, they could see living in front of them every single day the manifestation of the glory of God, the power of God, the faith of the Lord, the love of God, the healing that's there. They could see. He lived in front of them. He walked in front of them. He who had been paralyzed to whatever degree, it doesn't matter. Everybody knew this guy. This was not done in a corner. This was done openly and everybody knew this guy needed a miracle. And nobody could get him healed except one wonderful physician. And so he left that meeting and he glorified God all the way. And yet the power of God was there to heal them. Them. And he was showing them what was wrong in their lives. That as far as the kingdom is concerned and grace is concerned and love is concerned, they were paralyzed. They couldn't function in it. They didn't have it inside of them. And he says, I've come to heal you. I've come to heal you. Now look at this, verse 26. Because I'm out of time. Or 25, immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed. You know what that word means? It blew every circuit breaker in their brains. Their natural, limited human understanding went out the window. It blew them away. It blew their mind. That's literally what that word amazed means. It means literally the displacement of the mind. In other words, they didn't have answers for this. They'd never seen anything like this before. In their life, they hadn't seen this. In your wildest dreams, you would never dream this one up. They couldn't put this in a box. This is free. This is living. This is going. This is happening right in your neighborhood, in front of your eyes. This is is a transformation. This is a transformation. And then it says, they were all amazed, and suddenly the infectiousness of glorifying God and praising God and loving God suddenly got on them. 
The man was glorifying God and they couldn't help it. They had to glorify God with him. It's infectious. And lo and behold, they're glorifying God and, and they're caught up in the moment and then somehow, some way, they composed themselves. And they went back to the grid that they understood and it says, were filled with fear, saying, we've seen strange things today. Do you know what the word strange is? Paradoxos. We get our word paradox from it. Do you know what that means? It's two Greek words. Para, to be alongside of. Doxa, glory. They came alongside of the glory of God. And one group of people walked away with glory in them totally transformed and healed, and another group of people that he intended to heal walked away with no glory on the inside of them, unchanged for healing's sake, but changed actually for the worse because from this point on, they start after him. They're going to tear this down because it's a threat to the way that they can think. So, why am I saying these things to you? Because we're living in a day and we're living in a time where God pours out His glory. And I'm here to tell you this evening, you better buckle up and put your helmet on and get ready for a ride because He's going to begin pouring out more glory than you've ever seen in your life. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to respond to the glory of God and the healing intent of the Father's heart? Are you going to hang on to what you've had in the past? Or are you going to love enough that faith begins to work and that even in your paralysis you say, I don't know how you're going to get me there, but just get me there. Get me into the presence of Jesus. I want to be there. Because if I can come in there, I'm going to get healed. Hmm? I'm going to get healed. So two groups of people came into the presence of the glory of God. One group of people left with healing and glory. The other people left with condemnation and angst of the highest order because that group of people began systematically getting ready to persecute him and ultimately to kill him. That's what was in their hearts. And yet, and yet, his desire was to heal them. His desire is to heal you. His desire is to heal me. And His desire is to heal us. He comes to give us life. And He comes to give it abundantly. Parisos. Super abundance of quantity and superior quality. That's the life that He wants to give to you. And that's the life that He wants to give to me. And that's the life that He wants to give to us. And so... We've got, to, we've got to answer some questions inside of our own heart and inside of our own life. Lord, what are you going to do? What are you going to do in my heart and my life? And I've determined in my heart I've determined to lay my heart, to lay my life out before the Lord and say, Lord, expose every single area of paralysis in me. Let your light and your glory come and shine upon every wrong way of thinking. Lord, I don't want to live in my past experiences. I want what's fresh. I want what's new. And I want it today. So come with your glory. 
And I want to come alongside your glory until I am healed, until I am set free, until I can rise up from my paralysis of all of my religiosities or all of my grid of human limited thinking. And I want to get up and I want to walk. And I want to glorify you while I'm doing it. Hmm? I want to glorify you. And so this is what God's doing in this hour all over the earth. He's bringing forth His glory. And He's bringing forth His glory in such a way that there's healing in it. And if you stand and you try to judge it according to your past grid of all your experiences, you're going to miss it. Guaranteed. You know, they've got a movie out now called Jesus Revolution. I want to go see it, but I have to tell you, I don't have to go see it. You know why? Because I lived it. That's when I came into the kingdom. So you know that you're getting old whenever they start making movies of your past. Hmm? And I can tell you this. It's got the same feel, it's got the same smell, it's got the same taste of exactly how I came into the kingdom in this day and in this time and in this hour. And the mistakes that were made by the church back then, we would better not make those same mistakes now. And that is to say, well, I don't know. I don't know about these hippies. I don't know about these, these LGBTQ plus pink haired, purple haired people coming to church. I don't, I don't know. They're, they're not walking with God. The power of the Lord was present to heal. And He wants to heal us from our inabilities to function in grace, faith, love, and mercy. And He wants to bring forth His kingdom to bear in society in general. And He doesn't care where He does it. He might even do it in churches. Hmm? You with me? And so I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I want to be healed in my thinking. I want to be, fe I want to be healed in my ability to love with His love. I want to surrender every single offense and every single level of unforgiveness. And I want to move and I want to operate in forgiveness. And I'll leave you with this one. My friend Juan Carlos said to me one day, he said, Bill, I don't know anybody. I've never met anybody like you. I don't know anybody like you that has more opportunity to be offended than you. You've had more opportunities to become offended and bitter than anybody that I know. And yet you're not. Why? And I said, pretty simple, really. I learned a long, long, long time ago to run the white flag of surrender up the flagpole of my heart as quickly as I possibly could and forgive as quickly as I possibly could. Move in grace. Move in mercy. Move in love, agape love. And move in faith. And when you do that, and the glory of God shows up, you're going to be transformed, and then you're going to become an agent of transformation. You will carry the glory of God with you wherever you go, and you will touch everybody that you meet. And there will be a transformation. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema of God. God's spoken. God's spoken word. But transformation comes by seeing. 
and we look into his face, Paul says, and we're changed from glory to glory. The transformation comes through vision and the ability to see. So let him touch you. And let him heal you. And whenever his glory is present, even if you've got a battle in your own soul, get up from your chair and go to the altar and jump in with both feet. And don't hold anything back. Just go for it with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And who cares what people think? The guy that was paralyzed did not care what anybody thought of him. And his friends, thank God for his friends, because his friends didn't care what anybody else thought either, or they would have never tore a hole in the roof. Amen? Let him amaze you. Let him tear away and displace your limited human understandings. And let him replace it with his glory and with his love. Amen? Why don't you stand with me? Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your great grace and I thank you for your wonderful mercies that are new every morning. And I thank you for that agape, that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful love that will not let us go. And I thank you that you extend your mercies and you extend your healings into our heart and into our life time and time and time and time again and again and again and again and again. And I thank you, Lord, that you will not let us go, but you will deal with our hearts and you will deal with our lives until we surrender the grid of our limited understanding. And let your grace and your mercies move and let your love fill us so much so that faith begins operating and no sooner does that happen than healing flows. And so we yield to you tonight and we say to you, yes, Lord, yeah, I want that. I want that. I don't want to be spiritually paralyzed and I don't want to fold my arms and resist everything that you're doing and everything that you're saying. I want to be open to you and yielded and available to you. So come, Holy Spirit. Breathe your breath of life into our heart, I pray. In Jesus' magnificent name. Amen. Amen. Well, I went a little bit over. Forgive me. So y'all are free to go get filled up with glory. And come this week prepared with open hearts for camp meeting because there's going to be glory poured out. Yes, ma'am. Last week, Jeff was uh, home from the uh -huh. and I really am selfishness well, it operates out of so fear. I've been in that and, uh, and then tonight realizing such a clear love has casts no that has no place to stop. No, it doesn't. And that's why the woman could go yeah. in the banquet where she wasn't invited in front yep. of all those people and yes. lavish yes. her feet. Yes, and absolutely. And they were okay tearing off the roof of someone else's house. Yeah. So New for me to put that word in That's there good. what you taught tonight. That's good. I've added self. There is no sense of self no. in no, no, no. perfect love. No, there's not. It's absolutely not. You. You're welcome. <laughs> it always touches my heart. I'm so glad.
to think that because she was going to die, I said there was the condition was a little thin, and that it could have been. I mean, there was another case where the disciples said, who is sin, this man or his parents? Right, right. And he said, neither. Right. Well, what struck me about if it was that, I mean, it's not, you can't say definitively, but yeah. I thought it could be that. That was Maybe. the first thing he addressed, isn't it? Right. Is it, how beautiful yeah, that is the thought of if his friends had seen the sin that he committed that yes. so and still wanted him, we're like, no, yes. we're not. We're not settling no. for this. No, we're lo we Maybe. love him. He is not going to stay this way. This is yeah. not going to rule in his life. That's why it's good to have good friends. <laughs> it is. It's really good to have good friends. Friends that love you enough that look beyond all of our, all of our garbage. And we've all got it. Well, I don't know about you two, but I, I've got it. Well, maybe. <laughs> but maybe not. I'm over. It's not a contest. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> It's not a contest you want to win, is it? <laughs> yes, you are so welcome.